you watch my video explaining supreme chi, also known as hockey, then you'd know that chi is an energy centered all around the fact that it is in constant vibrating motion. Take this little theory as a preview to the concepts in the next two videos, Understanding Hockey Part 3 and 4. In the latest chapters, Apu is seen doing invisible damage to Luffy and Zoro. This right off the bat is similar to hockey, both advanced armament and conqueror's hockey. It could be one or the other, but I actually think it's both. The sound waves do physical and internal damage, which is right on the money when talking about advanced armament. I believe a good indicator that Apu is using hockey in his devil fruit ability is back when he attacked Kizaru. Notice how he's actually able to do physical damage to him. I can already see it now people telling me that it was just the attack landing that isn't enough to say it's hockey. Well here's the thing, unlike someone like Crocodile who is made of sand or Kuzan's ice body, Kizaru is made of light. Light can't be touched. It's pretty self explanatory why Apu's powers had to be hockey to affect Kizaru the way that it did. Should you need further explanation stick around after I conclude this theory, but for right now I'm just going to move on. We gone over why his powers are like armor, so let's start talking about the other Hawk ability. Conqueror's Hockey has been shown to do physical damage as well, despite being purely spiritual aka non-physical. But where armament and conquerors differ is in the fact that advanced armament is a physical manifestation of spiritual aura. The fact that it's a physical manifestation means that it isn't purely spiritual. So even though it is invisible, it does have a physical presence. Conqueror's Hockey on the other hand is just a force, it is intangible. Do you know of a vibrational energy that is non-physical but can do physical damage? One that comes to mind is called sound. You know, like what Apu's devil food powers are. Mom, I broke it! You did not. Conqueror's Hockey has been shown many times to coincide with sound, specifically yelling. Also, similar to Apu's powers, Conqueror's Hockey is often shown with multiple ripple effects. This makes sense because Hockey, and not just Conqueror's, but all Hockey is based off vibrations. Okay, it's not that simple. To understand, let's first real quick go over what Chi is again. Chi is vibrating in constant energetic motion within all things. With that in mind, let's look at a quote from world-renowned engineer and inventor Nikola Tesla. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibrations. This can even be factored in with observation hockey. If you notice when it was first introduced, it was referred to as a voice that is heard. And what is a voice? Well, it's the sound you make. So once again showing how his powers are similar to multiple types of hockey. In understanding hockey part 2, I speculate fighting styles that could utilize arm and hockey three of which showcase ripple effects. In the anime, whenever Conqueror's Hockey is used, it is paired up with a sound of vibrating material. In fact, they use this very same sound effect when Burgess uses a move that involves him vibrating. And just look at his elbow gear, it looks like a speaker. Then you have the clash between Luffy and Doflamingo, which showcases both Armin and Conquerors. That showed a huge ripple. So as you can see, vibrational energy is the common factor in both types of hockey. However, even with the same source, the vibrations are used in different ways. Energy is everywhere, and in everything, there is energy. 
we have centers in our body that are conductors for this energy. These energy centers are called chakras. Through these chakras, we take in and send out energetic vibrations on many different levels, such as body, mind, heart, and soul. Each chakra has a different color associating with it, and each color has a different vibration. Now what we're going to do is figure out which type of hockey is associated with which frequency. Armament hockey can involve an energy wave that indiscriminately attacks all that comes into contact with it. Conqueror's hockey can specifically target its enemies, much like Apu's devil fruit powers. One thing to note is that while Conqueror's hockey can do physical damage, it isn't limited to just physical attacks. In fact, it primarily does spiritual and psychological damage. It's really only the strongest, or should I say loudest voices, that does physical damage, such as those of the Yonko. Luffy was knocked out for a bit when hit by an explosion caused by Apu. Luffy isn't some random fodder, he's the future king of the pirates. Sure, it may have been internal damage, but Luffy is no stranger to taking internal attacks. He's been hit with impact dials and Roku guns. However, if you look at the face Luffy makes, it's very similar to that of the face he made when being psychologically damaged from witnessing Ace's death. Credit to ghoulish theories for pointing this out. We know that memories and spirits are linked because of how Pudding's memory powers affect Big Mom's soul powers. So that pretty much covers my reasons I believe Apu's devil fruit powers are based off of Haki. It is possible that Apu's devil fruit ability is simply just turning himself into an instrument and then he uses his Haki to amplify and weaponize the effects of his music. However, I have reason to believe that the devil fruit itself contains the ability to utilize Haki. This means even if Apu wasn't naturally gifted with Conqueror's Haki, like Luffy, he would still have the ability to use Conquerors through his fruit. In order to hear me fully explain this, please stay tuned and check out Understanding Haki Part 3 and 4 when those videos come out. And of course, Part 1 and 2 if you haven't already. In Part 3, I will explain why the element of sound is attributed to Conqueror's Haki, which will then lead me to explain why it is singers and musicians such as Brook, Apu, and Big Mom seem to have domain over spirits through the use of their own spiritual powers. And in Part 4, I will go over why Haki and Devil Fruit powers are interconnected. I will go full Vegapunk and really try to uncover the true origins of Devil Fruits and why their powers are the way that they are. That's it for Food for Thought. I made it short and sweet, but if you'd like to hear me elaborate more, then stick around for the secret ending. We like food for thought? Then check out the rest of my channel. Want to see some actually well thought out analysis and theories with a bunch of evidence to back them up? Well then check out my series, Deep Dive. Thanks for watching. Once again, I want to shout out Ghoulish Theories. If it wasn't for his theory, I don't think I would have made this video. Eventually I would have talked about why I believe Alpu's devil fruit powers are hockey, but in addition to his theory and also the relevancy of the chapters, I felt inspired to make a video dedicated to just Apu. The reason for this is also because I was thinking of putting him in part 3 along with Brooke and Big Mom, but that video is already long enough. However, what Ghoulish Theory proposed was just too perfect to go along with my theory for me to not talk about Apu and I believe giving him his own video is just so appropriate. Had I not seen his theory, I would have just talked about why I think Apu's devil fruit powers are hockey in part 4 when I start talking about devil fruits. But here we are. Okay, so let me give a better explanation why Apu's power was hockey against Kizaru. Even though Aokiji is a Logia, he still can be physically touched because ice is solid. Kizaru being made of light means that physical objects can pass through him. This means Apu's attacks had to be hockey to touch him. Also, unlike Sea Stone, Haki doesn't revert Logias to their original bodies. So even though Apu's attack may have dismembered Kizaru, it doesn't mean his real body was dismembered. He is still made of light, thus can regenerate. I'd say the reason Apu's attacks didn't do much damage is because his Haki wasn't strong enough. Also, Apu knew Kizaru was a Logia. Notice he never boasted when he hit Kizaru. He knew immediately to get out of there. So I doubt he would attack Kizaru knowing he was a Logia just for his attack to have absolutely no effect. It's more like Kizaru just tanked the attack, cause he's just that strong. Now thank you so much for watching this, please check out my upcoming videos. What I have scheduled is Understanding Hockey Part 3 next, then Part 2 of my theory about Law being a part of Sword. And before I end this, let me suggest another video to watch, Rokushiki is Hockey. Like this video, I show how that power was Haki the whole time. In fact, earlier I mentioned how Luffy took internal damage due to Rokugan, which is actually a lot like advanced arm and Haki. So here's a clip of that video. 
What you're about to watch is a highly detailed theory with so much research dedicated to it, you might as well start calling me Dr. Vegapunk. In fact, I dare say that this isn't just a theory, but it's actually confirmed. Nowhere in the manga is it stated that Haki and Rokushiki are actually the same as of yet. However, there is a sixth One Piece data book. It is known as the Vivir Card One Piece Visual Dictionary, and it's less like a data book and more like a database. It gets regularly updated, and I'm not just saying this as a fun fact. The revision of the information is actually what makes it seem as if this theory is actually fact. Rob Lucci's Vivir Card once stated that after the time skip, he learned hockey. That would seem to be contradictory info to what I'm proposing. However, they went and revised it to say that his hockey got stronger. This implies he already was using hockey pre-time skip. The fact that they went out of their way to clarify this leads me to believe that it will be relevant in the future. I'll talk more about the Viva card later, but I just wanted to inform anyone that doubts this theory that there is official information that practically confirms this. You can find this info on the official One Piece website, but unfortunately that site is in Japanese. I suggest going to the Library of Ohara for translations. And even more relevant to this theory, there is a Reddit post about this very topic. There will be links below to these things. Now that was some damn fine information to prove my point. However, I didn't make a half hour video just to show you one nugget of information from a V-Break card. If the data book wasn't credible enough for you, well don't worry, there's still a ton of evidence from the manga to show why it's true. Or maybe you are convinced, but you'd like to learn more about Rogushiki, Haki, and the real world inspirations that helped Oda create these concepts. Or perhaps you think it's true, but you also think it's a retcon. Well then, enjoy my theory, or should I say analysis, on why Rokushiki is, and always has been, Haki. Perhaps the first six powers are Root Chakra, and the seventh is Sacral. If you watch Understanding Haki Part 2, then you understand why I'd reference Chakra. In fact, I'd advise you watch Part 1 if you'd want to understand the rest of this theory. But I'll give you a little summary. Basically, all you need to know is that Haki means Supreme Chi and the words Qi and Qi are interchangeable. Qi, in the simplest of terms, is everything, but could also be seen as life force or a source of energy. With that being said, how does Qi relate to Rokushiki? Well, for starters, Tekai is based off of a martial arts style that involves Qi. Like the monks of the Shaolin, Pan trains in what is known as the Iron Body style of Kung Fu. The monks developed Iron Body training to focus and intensify their Qi to harden their bodies. Hey, did you like that clip? Then go check out the entire video on YouTube. There's a lot of detail and hard work that went into this. I promise you, it's well worth it.